Meet David Chong. David is a professional tournament angler based in the Toronto region. I'm waiting for a fish to jump right now. David has competed in fishing tournaments all over the world. It's only fitting that he comes to the Pontiac region to discover what the Pontiac has to offer. The Pontiac is one of Canada's hidden gold mines in terms of fishing destinations and so much more. Known for its wild spaces and untouched beauty, you need to visit the region for yourself to truly appreciate just how amazing this outdoor playground truly is. Come along and discover for yourself what the Pontiac has to offer. This is Lake to Plate. David will be making a number of stops on his first ever visit to the Pontiac region. And along with being known for adventure tourism, the Pontiac is a terrific destination for agritourism with plenty of amazing and diverse farms to visit. First stop, Starborn Farms, a small vegetable and livestock farm located in Bristol, Quebec, owned by Robin and Jennifer Judd. Hi, I'm Jen Russell Judd. And I'm Robin Judd, and we own Starborn Farms. My ancestors landed when they first came about 1812. They all ended up down south of Ottawa, and it was a little overpopulated, and the land was uh, just wasn't quite rich enough. And they found their way up here and started the settlement. We're both from the Pontiac, and a lot of people grew up here, and some move away, but I think the ones that stay stay because they really love it here. Starborn Farms is 240 acres of full circle farming. We have cattle, sheep, vegetables, grapes, donkeys, some permaculture and some crops in rotation. What we're not able to use for agriculture production per se, we use it to welcome people to share our experience with us. Pumpkins here. This looks awesome. Hello, hello. Hello. I'm Dave. Nice to meet you guys. Lovely produce here. I'm super excited to see what seventh generation farmers can show a guy from the city. What brings you to the area? Well, I'm coming up to do a little bit of fishing. Yeah. So I'm, we're hoping uh, we're going to pick up some vegetables and maybe some potatoes. Uh, we're going to have a, a short lunch once we uh, hopefully catch some fish. If you don't catch any fish, come on back and we'll get you a nice steak. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm all about that too. Why don't we uh, take you on a tour of the gardens and the farm and we'll uh, show you what produce we have. Awesome. I'm, let's, let's go. We're able to grow about 50 different types of vegetables and fruits here. It's nutrient rich ground that's perfect for a super abundant uh, crops in a very tiny area. Given some of the unique things here, we're able to bring people in and, and show it to them as well and really give the experience of what farming can be. I know at some of these fairs, I see these enormous giant pumpkins. So what's the heaviest one that's ever been weighed here? It would be about 1,400 pounds. <sighs> So what we have here are pie pumpkins. So they're much smaller than your regular jack-o'-lantern. They're a heavier, thicker flesh and less seed. So higher sugar, less moisture content. So sweeter pumpkin pies. Sweeter pumpkin pies. Nice. <laughs> All the equipment I use here is probably from the 40s. There's a vintage. Vintage, but it works. Right. It works. Gather up the potatoes from the ground. So it digs. Oh, look at that. Look at that, eh? So cool. There's a little scoop underneath. All right. And it digs up the potatoes, and they uh, go up the little conveyor, <laughs> and they'll fall off the back. So they look, they're looking, uh, they're looking mighty tasty. All right, here comes the basket. Should we go pick some stuff. Ah, oh, let's go pick some stuff. So we grew up very close to this farm, and I always thought it was a really cool piece of land and it had a lot to offer for mixed farming, for not one thing. We like to have our hands in a lot of different things, I suppose. 
cool weather crops like broccoli, ground cherries, and then quick growing things like greens and stuff like that. I see some peppers on here. Yes, yeah, so these are hot peppers. So they're purple when they start to grow and they're red when they're ripe. So we also have like some bigger bell peppers and stuff down here that are really sweet. Lots of kale. Yeah. Kale's not really my thing. I, uh, you know, if you put the right dressing on it, it might be okay, but yeah. Have you ever tried fresh kale? I can't say I really have. Let me let me give this a whirl here. This is this is without any salad dressing, okay? So, straight up. Straight up. It's it's very different from the kale I've had before. I just I, I don't mind this. This is all right. <laughs> couple types of eggplant. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this one. That could feed a few people. So I, I heard the soil is super rich in this area. We're a narrow little valley just beside the Canadian Shield. So this used to be the Champlain Sea. So this, this was riverbed. This used to be underwater. Exactly. At exactly. one point. Yeah. We have a pretty good variety of tomatoes right now. They're near the end of the season. So we have six or seven different varieties of cherry tomatoes. Mm. What's this one? Looks like a big giant grape. Smurf tomato. Smurf tomato? That's cool. I, I've never seen this before. That was delicious. <laughs> well, Olivia, what do you think? Why don't we go fishing for some pumpkins? Okay. I'm done in a while. Okay. Cool. They sound like they're nice and big, and we'll catch one. Uh-huh, you can okay. make like 10 pumpkin pies out of them. Jeez, that's a lot of pumpkin pie. Uh -huh. Okay, you got it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go. Leave it to David to make fishing part of his visit to Starboard Farms. Oh, I, I feel one at the end of the line here. Do you feel one at the end of your line? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, pull on it. Set the hook. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, you got it. You got the rod bed. Just keep yeah. the rod bed. Don't, don't lose it. Don't lose it. That's a nice one. You got a nice one there. I need to Oh, there's the one. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Olivia. I can't. Oh, these are going to be delicious. Thank you very much. I, it was, the tour was awesome. I learned a lot of stuff. I got to try some great vegetables. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow at the lunch. Yes. Yeah. We'll see you guys at lunch. The River Road here, we have uh, some really great producers and uh, local agritourism. So together, it makes the area really fascinating because there's not one type of farm around here. There's 50 kinds of farms around here. And everyone's able to uh, work together and it's a really neat little community. Coronation Hall is just five minutes up the road. Just down the road in Bristol is David's next stop, Coronation Hall Cidery. Owned and operated by Greg Graham, this cidery follows the tradition of old world cider, crafted with apples grown on his family's orchard. My name is Greg Grant and I'm one of the owners here of Coronation Hall Cider Mills and I own the orchard and I grow the apples and a uh, municipal councillor, I'm a school board commissioner, I'm a president of the Pontiac Community Players and goodness I feel like I'm applying for a job here. No, but I do a little bit of everything and that's key, right? Just really involved in the community. It's the kind of place where you know everybody and everybody knows you, it's got that great small town feeling, it's still affordable. If the Pontiac was a meal, right, and what flavor are we adding to it, we're providing a bit of life and excitement and fun where people can stop and pick up all the treats they need to go on a picnic. Hey, how are you today? Good, how are you? Good, good. And I'm Dave. Hey, nice to meet you, Dave. I'm Greg. Welcome nice to, to Coronation you, Hall. Greg. Yeah, this is our little shop and bake shop part of the cider mill right here. Bunch of different things as you can see you know we do 
Well, I mean, apples are our main thing, right? We've yeah. got the orchard. I have the orchard just north of here, about 1,100 trees on 12 acres, all different varieties. We sell some of them here, but the vast majority go into juice and to alcohol, which is what we mm. make here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the juice, the alcohol I'm going to try. Is Absolutely. We'll get you to try all of it here sure. anyways. Sure. I'm, I'm, right? I'm all excited about that. So <laughs> Everybody who great. comes gets some to try, and then we say, did you buy anything, or did I just feed you and send you on your way? <laughs> oh, well, it's all good. <laughs> So the barbecue sauce, yeah, we make apple butter. Now, have you ever had apple butter before? I don't think so. You make this real thick paste, this apple butter, and we've been selling that for years. Then one day we said, well, let's turn it one more time. Let's transform it into apple butter barbecue sauce. So then we add the tomatoes and the spices and we, we pep it up a bit. The apple cider jelly, apple raspberry jelly, apple mm. marmalade, mm. apple right. relish. Come on, we're too close to lunch now. Go All right, sorry, sorry. You're going to be hungry here. If, if it can be done to an apple, we've tried, right? Wow. We, we do it We do it all. Cool. Would you like to try some of this stuff? I do. Oh. <laughs> you have to ask it. All right, all right, all right. Well, let's go over here. I've got some stuff for you to try. Our famous apple cookies. Wow. They're Never... always soft, very chewy. We make hundreds of these, thousands of these constantly. I've never had an apple cookie before. Have one, it won't be your last. Mmm. <laughs> all right. They are nice and soft. Yep. <laughs> Tasty. All right, now pace yourself. I have a lot for you to try mm. here. Don't worry, you duck, my friends. I can eat, All right. so there's no worries there. All right, well, now you go <laughs> try the juice. There you are. Anyways, cheers. Mm. Cheers. <laughs> Do I have to let it breathe or anything? Or? It's juice. We don't stand on all that. <laughs> we don't stand on all that highfalutin stuff here. Mm. Oh, yeah. man. I could drink that every day. This is awesome. Yeah. All right, but you're not done. Let's try the barbecue sauce. Mmm. Change your life. Mmm. Oh, yeah. I'm not leaving without some of this. <laughs> this is amazing. Really good. All right. Now the hard cider. Okay. Okay. So, hard to make stuff. the hard cider, and I'll show you how we make it in a little bit, but it's just apples, it's practically a health drink. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding, don't quote me on that. <laughs> all right, all right. so I'll give you a little taste here. Sorry, bit ahead on that. Now you can do the swirl for food, but again, say, oh, we, we don't stand on all that ceremony here, <laughs> we just drink it. That's nice. I'd have this over wine. Yeah, oh, of course. <laughs> So how long has the cidery been in operation? I believe we're in our 11th year, okay. 12th year. I was gonna say at least six, cause that's how long it took for the trees to. Uh, well, exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I planted the trees about 15, 16 years ago. I'm sure after tasting that uh, barbecue sauce and the oh, yeah. sweet cider, this cider, you guys are a destination point, I guarantee you that. We're a nice mix of the old and the new. You know, we're something new for the Pontiac. A cidery, we haven't had that in the past, and yet the Pontiac used to produce apples and a lot of them. All right, so this is where we, we do all the production. This is where the magic happens. It's our family recipe of cider that we've been making for generations, and we've been working on it, adapting it, making it better. So we've been running them through big bin like this. We fill up a bin like this out in the orchard. It's about 800 pounds of apples. And then we'll bring that down here from the farm. We tip it upside down. It goes onto the sorting table. That pushes them through. We get them clean. Then they go up the elevator and then down into the mill. Big blades in there chop the whole apple up. So a load of apples like that, yeah. how much juice would you get out of it? If everything goes well, I can get about 70 gallons oh, okay. out of 800 pounds. There's 100 liters of juice right behind you there. Wow. About 20 gallons. Wow. And we're going to filter that and then we add it to the tank. Once we get to about 600 liters, that'll finish off a vat. We'll seal the vat. Then we bring it up to temperature. But then we're ready to add the yeast and it's consuming that sugar, turning it into alcohol. And then it's just filtering and aging for a few months after that until we get it just the way we like it. And then we can it or we bottle it. And when you make something, like when I can drink something or take it to a friend's house or, or, or introduce it to someone and say, yeah, I, 
I prepared the soil, I planted the tree, I pruned the tree, I, I picked the apples, you know, I pressed them, I fermented them, I put it in the bottle, I put the label on the bottle. Like, it's really neat to think that you can still make something in that kind of craftsman kind of way. Not everything has to be mass produced. Well, we got some ciders because I think everybody's going to want some with the uh, shore lunch tomorrow, but uh, can't leave without a couple of these. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Raise a drink to me, please. Yep, Raise a drink. Will. We definitely will, Greg. <laughs> well, Greg, thanks for the tour. Thanks for the samples. We are going to really enjoy this tomorrow, and uh, we'll be back for sure, 100%. Right. Sounds great. Have a great time. Thanks. Sometimes you have to remind yourself, you know, when I'm sitting at home and I'm dreaming of maybe going on holidays or something, I already live where other people are dreaming of going on holiday. And that's pretty special. With local fare in hand, it's time for David to hit the water. You would never know Quebec's Pontiac region and all its natural beauty is only a two hour drive from Canada's capital, Ottawa. It's a trip made even shorter thanks to all the many excellent roads. Martin and Danielle have been providing an outfitter and guiding service to visitors to Quebec's Pontiac region for years. Located on Lac de Lydienne, they are known in the Pontiac as some of the finest fishing and hunting guides in the region. David is in excellent hands during his first ever fishing experience in the Pontiac. Yes sir, Mr. Dave. Hey, Martin. How are you? Comment ça va? Good, good. <laughs> Glad to see you. Yeah, same here. I guess you brought the rain because uh, half an hour ago it was sunny. I know. So we better get out there and get some fishing done. I love it. When Seems it's right uh, overcast. Though. Okay. This is not a tournament, but I'm just excited to go out there and uh, and catch some of these lake trout, which I don't I don't get to fish for very much uh, during this time of year. I fish for them through the ice especially on my home lake, Lake Simcoe. Let's go. It's fishing time. Having collected all the locally grown and produced ingredients for the next day's feast, it's time for David and his two new friends to do what they do best, catch some fish. My name is Martin Leduc, my conjoint Daniel Marchand. We are the proprietors of Squaw Lake Outfitter for the Lake de l'Indien. For us, the francophones who don't know the term of the Squaw, we discovered that it was not a good term. Donc, on est en, présentement en train de changer le nom de la pauvrerie. Donc, sous peu, dans quelques mois, ça, ça va changer de nom pour le euh, respect envers les Autochtones. Puis, quand on est ensemble, moi et Martin, on a toujours vu que c'était notre rêve d'avoir une, une pauvrerie. Fait que... On voyait le potentiel. Danielle, elle vient d'une famille de pêcheurs et de chasseurs. Donc, euh, elle chasse pas pêche depuis qu'elle est toute petite, puis moi aussi. Two. Yeah, perfect. So today we're out here, uh, we're fishing, we're trolling for speckled trout or brook trout. And uh, I have, uh, we have Danielle Marchand with me today. Um, the better half. Yes. And uh, hopefully uh, we're going to get into uh, some nice specks. It could be some lake trout here as well, you said? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because we're, we're in the kind of in the fall now. So the, water the colder water and the fish are going to come yeah. up a little higher in the water column. Okay. Exactly. All right. C'est un très, très beau lac. Euh, C'est euh, un des seuls lacs qui se reproduit naturellement pour la truite grise. Puis il y a une place euh, dans le lac qui a quasiment 240 pieds d'eau. C'est vraiment spécial, un lac si creux. Puis euh, c'est pour ça qu'elle n'a pas trop de misère à se reproduire. Je pense que la région du Pontiac, c'est une région sous-estimée, peut-être un peu sous-développée. Puis comme vous pouvez voir, on est comme d'une région sauvage. Juste de se réveiller à tous les matins puis de regarder le, la beauté du lac, on dirait que c'est complètement ailleurs. C'est un beau paysage. I don't think it'd be just for fishermen, just somebody who wants a different experience. We have a somebody lot of wants, the yeah. clients that come just to relax. They call it fishing, not catching, because you just never know when the fish are going to bite. All right, guys, game over. Take them in. Oh, I don't really want to stop fishing, but let's go. Between David's extensive experience and that of his two guides, they know it's just a matter of time before they figure out where the fish are. They'll try again in the morning. Dave, he's in the chalet flatin. That's the highlight. 
de notre pauvrerie. Ouais. Il est ancré dans une petite baie euh, au bout de mode baie, à l'abri du vent. Mm -hmm. Tranquille, il n'y a pas de trafic. Les bateaux ne passent pas par là, c'est au bout d'une du, baie, donc euh, tu pas de trafic passant. On a bâti un raft euh, de 20 pieds par 40 pieds. Puis ensuite, on a bâti un petit chalet 16 par 26 dessus. Good morning. So we survived the storm? It was loud, but once I fell asleep, I was gone. And I was, I was blown away by how stable I got. Just, I didn't feel any movement at all. Dessus, il y a toutes les commodités normales qui iraient d'un vrai chalet, système solaire. So, c'est de l'énergie euh, renouvelable. Truly a unique experience. I brought breakfast. Oh, excellent. Et tu te lèves le matin avec le, le lever du soleil euh, en prenant ton café okay. sur le deck. Toutes les sports d'été, les activités estivales sont drettes là au chalet. Tu te baigner. Tu peux pêcher drette sur le deck. <rire> <rire> Puis je pense qu'il va falloir. Euh, en bâtir un ou deux de plus. C'est dans les plans. C'est devenu notre chalet le plus populaire dans, dans deux ans. Là, so, was it your first time uh, lake trout fishing in Québec? Yes. Yeah. Come on. There's a fish. Yeah, there's a fish right beside you. Look on the sonar. Oh no, I, I, I felt it. He just bumped it. I set the hook. You got him? Yeah. Got a boy. Look That's at that. Weird. Now, is that is that kind of the average size? That's a little smaller than average. Okay. Cat and mouse game? Is that how they call yeah. it? <laughs> Isn't that the way it always works? Wherever you're fishing, they're over there. Oh, missed another one. Yeah, they're biting light, eh? Yeah. Oh, I just missed them. Avec euh, David, c'est un pêcheur euh, de compétition, comme que je faisais avant. Donc c'est le fun parce que je connais les, les deux côtés de la médaille. Là, que lui, c'est un pêcheur de grise, mais dans le coin du lac Simco, d'où ce qu'il vient. Et ici, c'est complètement différent. Juste la grosseur des leurs qu'on utilisait et tout ça, euh, il était pas mal surpris. I just saw one there. Yeah. Well, maybe they're over here. C'était drôle de fois qu'on avait plein d'affinités. On a déjà pêché ensemble un contre l'autre dans des tournois et on se connaissait pas. C'était le fun de se rencontrer puis euh, un bon mm -hmm. gars. Pareil comme si on se connaissait depuis toujours. That one? Yep. Nice. Uh, same size. Yeah, A little bit bigger. Size. There he goes. Last. I missed one. I noticed that because I always first I missed that. Oh, it came back. <laughs> nice. This is the golden trout. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, got him? Yeah. Nice. You fish enough, you know, some days you're the net man, some days you're the catcher, right? Yeah. We're all going to be eating these ones. Well, Martin, uh, we've caught a few fish. It's yep. been, uh, in spite of the east wind and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's time we call it a day and go fillet those fish. Yeah, exactly. exactly. All right. With fresh wild trout in hand, it's time to put together the feast before their guests arrive. No 
Donc, à Pauvoirie, quand que les gens euh, viennent à la pêche ou quand qu on guide les clients, euh, souvent, ils nous font la demande si on peut faire cuire leur poisson. Fait qu'on a le fish fry traditionnel qu'on peut faire à l'extérieur. On a une super bonne recette qui est très, très populaire. Même si on est des gens qui viennent du Pontiac, notre commerce nous demande d'être ici ce jour semaine, donc on ne sort pas beaucoup à l'extérieur. On n'était même pas au courant que Our Barn Farm puis uh, Coronation Hall, ça existait en ce des, des nouveaux places pour aller acheter des légumes que d'habitude on les achète peut-être juste à l'épicerie normale. On aime bien encourager local en plus. Donc c'était une bonne opportunité pour nous autres de rencontrer ce monde-là. Martin, yes, what, sir. Do we, what do we got going on here? Just in time. Veggies are ready to serve. Potatoes are on the barbecue. Now we're going to set up for the fish. So these are, these are the, the lake trout that we caught. I can't believe how orange that one yeah. is. That's Usually amazing. the specks are like that. Yeah. All that bacon, that's awesome. So we got about 15 minutes? Uh, 15, 20, 20 minutes or so. Okay, so why don't we grab a can of hard cider from Coronation Hall. We can get Good that idea. down, we'll split that and, while we're waiting. Good idea. Well, cheers to the Pontiac. Yep, salut. Yes, thank you very to Dave much. and our fish. <sighs> very refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Looks like we're ready to get it out to the folks there and yes, sir. Uh, enjoy our meals. All right. Well, this looks amazing, but before we get started, let me just have a few words here. I just want to thank everybody, first of all, for the hospitality. The last couple of days have been really eye opening for me. Um, a time of discovery, a new region. This, I've never been to this area before and it's amazing. New friends. So everybody, salut, and let's dig in and enjoy the feast. Cheers. Cheers. Le monde alentour de, du Pontiac, le monde du Pontiac, sont tellement gentils, serviables. Sont, tout le monde est pour tout, aider tout le monde. On essaie tout de s'entraider. Se, C'est la beauté de la place et du monde. It's clear David was mighty impressed with all those he met and experienced during his first ever visit to the Pontiac. <laughs> now that he's got his toes wet, I'm sure it won't be long before David returns for a much deeper dive into the Pontiac region's incredible natural bounty. <laughs>